Welcome to MHB Reviews. I review books and Bibles using high-resolution imaging and professional audio, as a supplement to all of the video reviews on YouTube. Today we are looking at the Cambridge Concord Reference Edition in Black Goatskin. I just want to add right away that R. Grant Jones does an excellent in-depth review on this same edition, and you should definitely check it out after this video. There's a look at the front. You can see the richness of the leather from here. Holy Bible is painted, but not embossed, in the center of the front cover. This Bible is perimeter stitched all the way around, and you can see the beautiful grain really well in this image. This is the back of the Bible. Here is the front of the box. The back of the box. Cambridge University Press is the oldest Bible publisher in the world. Included in the box is a card detailing edge lined Bibles. Edge lining means the liner is tabbed into the book block. This makes the Bible lie open more easily and increases durability. It also comes with a card discussing the long history of Cambridge Bibles. And there is a limited warranty on the reverse of that card. Here's a look at the spine. The gold lettering is painted on but not embossed. The spine hubs are tooled into the leather. This Bible has art gilt page edges, which is red under gold. It's kind of like a salmon under gold. Of the Bibles I've reviewed so far, this one has the best page edges. It's a clean, uniform spray, and none of the pages were stuck together out of the box. The Bible has red and gold head and tail bands. I think the color of the bands complements the Bible nicely. Cambridge uses a synthetic liner on this Bible, and it feels very nice. It's also quite durable. You can see the tab of the edge lining here. There's a look at the corner work. It's very good. I've heard other reviewers say Cambridge is the most consistent publisher when it comes to their quality. You may find nicer ones from other publishers, but Cambridge is most consistent. I'll leave that determination up to others who have had more premium Bibles than me. This Bible is 6 inches wide, just over 8.5 inches tall, and nearly 1.5 inches thick. There's a look at the band with the book open to the center. It's very sturdy and well executed. This Bible comes with two black ribbons. They are very average, but they are long enough to reach out of the corner of the book. There's some cardstock at the beginning of the Bible. Presentation page. Family records. Children. Marriages. There's actually a double-sided page for marriages. Grandchildren. And deaths. You'll note that each page of records is in blue ink, but the page for deaths is in black ink. Here's the first title page. You can see that we're going to have some ghosting with this paper, but it's not this bad in the Bible text. The ghosting looks particularly bad on this page, but don't let this scare you off. You'll see the tremendous difference in the Bible text. The paper is supplied by a French source, and the Bible is printed and bound in the Netherlands by Royal Youngblood. Table of Contents This is a self-pronouncing text, so you get a guide to the pronunciation marks. This Bible uses bold figure references, which keeps the text of the Bible clean. We'll talk more about those when we get to an example. Here is the Epistle Dedicatory. And this edition includes the translators to the reader. The names and order of all the books of the Old and New Testament. And here we are at Genesis. Here's a close-up of the text. The font is bold and very readable. It's approximately a 9.5 font. The paragraphs are marked by a pilcrow. Now you can see that the ghosting isn't much of an issue. The text is just so bold that I'm not getting a lot of confusion here. You can see this is a verse-by-verse -verse edition. You can also see that translator-supplied words are in italics. The bold figure cross-references correspond to the verse nearest to them. The bold 14 in the center column corresponds to verse 14. The number 1 corresponds to verse 1. One complaint about bold figure cross-references is that you lose some resolution as to which part of the verse the listed reference applies to. I think it's worth it for a text clean of superscript. The Bible is not line-matched, but I don't think that's an issue here. Book title and chapter are on the outer corner of each page. Then you get a headline in the inner corner of each page. Page numbers are at the bottom center of each page. There are no headlines breaking up the text in this Bible. The only breaks are for chapters, which always look like this. This Bible does not lay flat when opened at Genesis, although it does stay open. 
here's a look at the self-pronunciation marks found in this edition. You can see the text runs into the gutter. That's another issue with this book, but in practice, I wasn't distracted by it. And you can see that the poetic sections are still verse by verse and not arranged any different from the rest of the text. I actually favor this uniformity myself. But speaking of uniformity, we encounter another issue found in this Bible. Print non-uniformity is quite severe. This is the range you will see, and these are only separated by one page. I found the New Testament to be more uniform than the Old Testament. Most of the complaints I see about this edition involve this print non-uniformity. Many people don't think the range should be this severe with a Bible this expensive. The words of Christ are in black. You can see the gutter again here. I got used to it pretty quickly, but it is a little close for my taste. This image gives you a good look at the paper as well. There is almost no sheen on this paper, so it will be comfortable to read in every light. It's kind of an off-white or cream-colored paper. It's smooth to the touch and feels nice in the hand. Books of the Bible do not begin on their own page. There you can see the art gilt edges. They are very well done. At the back of the book is a short glossary of biblical usage. A very thorough concordance. There's the entry for God, just to give you a feel for how they set this up. You can see this concordance has quite a few entries for God. After the concordance is a concise Bible dictionary. There's a look at blasphemy, so you can see how it's formatted. The print is a little small, but I didn't find myself using this dictionary much. The dictionary comes with chronological tables of notable events. There's a chronology for the New Testament. After the dictionary is a map index, and it is color-coded. I love the maps in this Bible. They are a collaboration between Oxford and Cambridge, and they're fantastic. They are on a matte finished paper. The paper is thicker than the Bible paper, but it's not quite cardstock. And there's more blank cardstock at the back. There's your synthetic liner with edge lining. This is a beautiful Bible that is a pleasure to hold and to read. I came very close to ordering the Concord Wide Margin to be a companion to this Bible, but in the end I decided against it. I actually can't recommend you buy this book unless you're okay with the print non-uniformity. These editions regularly run between $165 and $180. That's just too expensive compared to some of its competitors. If you want this Bible, I recommend searching for a pre-owned one. At any price under $150, this book is a great deal. And don't get me wrong, this Bible is a work of professional craftsmanship. But when you get into that price range, it becomes hard to excuse any obvious flaws at all. And the print non-uniformity is a bug, not a feature. Other Bibles which use old-style fonts reminiscent of hot press printing don't suffer this issue to the same degree this Bible does. I do want to end on a positive note to say I think this Bible is the perfect size. It feels better to hold in the hand than any other Bible I have. I'll leave links in the description to Evangelical Bible where you can buy this Bible, and I'll also link to a more thorough review done by R. Grant Jones. If you enjoyed this review, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out the MHB podcast. Thank you all for joining me, and I will see you in the next review.